Welcome friends and fans, it's Sam Dobrow here. I'm reporting to you from virtual Ottovalo. Uh, that's the background that you're taking a look at, the city of Ottovalo. Uh, that's in uh, Ecuador. And uh, it's the scene for the uh, photos that I will be sharing with you today. Um, just want to let everybody know that we have uh, some shots that maybe aren't the most appetizing. So if you're, uh, you've got a snack, you might want to finish it before we get towards the end of this. But uh, there'll be a lot of cool stuff to see, and I think you'll be really excited to uh, see some of the photos I have of uh, indigenous tribes from, uh, from the Ecuador and Peru area. And this, uh, as we visit Atavalo and the, uh, and the uh, weekend market in Atavalo, that's really what we're going to see. And it's a, it's really a huge indigenous market. I think it's one of the largest in the country, if not in the region. And uh, it draws a very large crowd every weekend. And we were there. Uh, I had my camera and I captured a lot of what was there to see. So I will dive in and, uh, and uh, we'll start the talk and I'll share with you my photos from Otavalo. And I call this series, um, call this series uh, Autovalo Animal Market, Eat What You Kill. And that's kind of an old saying that uh, we used to uh, have in sales, which means, uh, you know, when times are really tough, you know, you, whatever you can go out and kill, you'll eat. You're not really going to be very picky about it. And, and uh, in this uh, market, a lot of these people are uh, subsistence farmers, and you'll see uh, uh, the way they uh, come to market with their goods. Again, this is the uh, overview of Atavalo. It's at the uh, base of the mountain here. And uh, as you can see, there's quite a few uh, homes in the area. There's a lot of uh, U.S. Ex expats that live here. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, popular place for tourists to come uh, on the, and see the animal market. A lot of my photos in this collection will be black and white, but some of them just commanded color as well. So every now and then you'll see a color photo because it, it has a totally different feel to it than the black and white. The black and white is uh, kind of an overall theme here, which uh, I, I think portrays a, a mood, but uh, some of the color photos are absolutely necessary to, uh, to, to make it real. Uh, at black and white tends to abstract things a little bit, and uh, you know, it's from an art, from an artistic perspective, it can be just beautiful in the tonal values and the lines and uh, the shapes. But uh, color also has a different voice when it speaks to you. Uh, here we have a a gentleman. He's got a uh, bag of roosters that he's brought with him for the market. Uh, this guy is in the bag, so to speak. Uh, he's poking his head out, but he can't really go anywhere. And uh, all these people just kind of gather on the, in the streets in this, in this big open area. Um, and it's, it's the market. They show their animals off, they're live, and they hope someone buys them. This picture is quite touching. You can tell that this young man here is brought his pet to the market and the lady that's behind him obviously is looking at that rabbit as being a, a pretty nice specimen and you can tell he really really doesn't want to sell it but he probably has to to, to generate income and it's, it's it's kind of a sad scene Black and white gives it a, a little bit of a different perspective here. You can feel the mood a little bit more between uh, the owner, the animal, and the buyer. Here we have an indigenous uh, elder woman. Uh, she's looking over fresh hatched uh, fresh fresh hatchlings. I'm not sure what they are. They're probably chicken or some other type of poultry that's raised. Uh, I really love the colors 
that she wears, the, the, the yellow gold beaded necklace, the green, the, the uh, fuchsia colors, um, all the, the red beads around her wrist. The colors are just so, so intense. Uh, you can tell she's a person of strong character, the way she wears those bold colors. That's a statement of who she is, and I think you can read that on her face as well. When you take away the color, it becomes more of a, uh, a picture of textures and character. Uh, or, or, or I think her facial features talk more than the colors of her clothing. This one here is also kind of a, a sad picture. Uh, we see this very young girl, and it looks like she's talking to one of her pet uh, lambs here and kind of telling them, you know, you're going to market. We may not see you again. That look in her eyes of just, you know, she's understands what has to be done. But the lambs don't. And I can just uh, feel something here that's going on. It's just uh, part of life. It's part of her life part of the life that she lives in. Here we have uh, a young man who's, obviously they just purchased this uh, uh, cow, bull, uh, whatever it is, I'm not sure. And uh, he's being brought onto the truck and be brought home uh, with the other pigs in the back. Uh, he's really having a strong arm, this animal. He, the animal does not want to get in the truck. I assume he knows he's been sold, but he doesn't know where he's going. He's got that look in his eyes. He's looking at me, not sure what his future brings, and uh, it's probably not anything that uh, is great. This is the part of the market that's the bovine area, the cow area. You can see a little bit in the background other uh, head of cattle that are there to, uh, to be sold. And this sits a little bit up uh, on a hill looking down on the market. You get a little bit of feel for, for how the market spread out in this valley. And uh, again, it's all livestock, it's all live animals in this, air, in this open market. And people come from far and wide to buy and sell uh, livestock every weekend. Here, we're a little bit away from the uh, center of the market, and these two gentlemen look like they're negotiating for something. I'm um, not sure what uh, it is, but th there's, there's some kind of a deal going on. You can tell by the expressions between the two of them that uh, one of them is not quite happy with the deal or, or what was offered. Again, the black and white just kind of brings out the the character here. This woman, uh, she's also a very uh, interesting character. She seems to be a very strong uh, matriarch. She dresses well and uh, she's there to buy and, and negotiate. And between her and her husband, who is in the next uh, frame, You'll see, they, they both look like they drive a hard bargain. And his, his hand signal here looks like he's making a gesture about how much he might be willing to pay for something. Uh, again, he looks like he's fairly well off. Uh, his clothes are fairly well kept. He's got a nice hat, which is a, a common style hat among the uh, indigenous people of uh, Ecuador and Peru. Here we have an elder woman. She's off to the side. Um, she has these beads around her neck, but she doesn't look quite as well off as some of the other people. So those beads may be heirlooms. Uh, I'm not sure she really even was here to sell anything or if she's just here with the family. Here we have two men also negotiating. 
Uh, the one on the right doesn't look too happy with the deal. The one on the left looks like he's trying to pull a swift one on him, uh, you know, offer him a little bit less of something for something he knows he should pay more. And the other guy's like, you know, how bad do I really need it? Um, again, this is part of the barter, part of the lifestyle. Uh, you'll notice the hats and the pigtails are very, uh, um, are very part of the identity of, of the indigenous people. Again, this is, uh, this is a way of life that's existed for uh, centuries. Come to this market, uh, they bring their, their goods and they barter and they haggle and they leave. Now, these elderly women, I'm not sure what was going on here, but boy, if looks could kill, that's probably what I should call this, um, this picture. Because this woman in the middle looks like she has said something really mean or nasty to the woman sitting down there. And the other two are like turning their heads almost in, in shame or embarrassment of what she said. But again, uh, I, I like the, uh, the hat that she's wearing. It, it speaks again to the indigenous tribe. Uh, the other women have head coverings, but they're not, they're not that hat. But that hat that woman in the middle wears uh, has seen, seen some years on it, seen, seen some wear. It's been around for a while. And they do make their own clothes. Many of them make their own clothes. I think uh, there's, a, there's a style that's, that's visible from the, uh, particularly the dress that the women wear. Um, and... Uh, and the way the, the shirts and the skirts and blouses are, are sewn. This gentleman uh, has a stand, uh, looks mostly like it's musical instruments, and uh, he's out there uh, looking for customers that may want to buy a flute or a guitar or a horn, uh, whatever uh, types of crafts he may have uh, to sell at the market. And this is also a, a, an interesting story to me. This, this child looks like he wants to eat this, uh, a bowl of clams. And this uh, gentleman is preparing it for him. Don't know if they are related or if a child has come here to pick something up for his parents or if he's buying it himself. But he's looking at this like there's really nothing there to eat even though it's a bowl full of shells that should be, have something there to eat. I don't know. I just found it interesting, the expression on the two faces, you know, and the, the focus on this bowl of clams. Here we have a music shop. Uh, these are some handmade guitars, and uh, they're obviously very highly crafted. Uh, music is a big way of life, and the guitar is a popular instrument. And here we go inside the market. Uh, we have a picture of cowheart, as far as I can tell. Uh, I believe these are the hearts of the cows, the, the bulls, the beef hearts. Um, Hanging in the, in the uh, market, this is a covered market. It's under roof, but it's uh, not air conditioned. You can see it behind there's like a, a cleaning trough uh, where many of the animals are prepared to be sold. Uh, you know, they will be cut up, butchered into various parts that can be purchased. And a lot of the... Uh, Things that are for sale here are things that generally uh, people from the United States would not consider an edible. Uh, there are many times organs. You can see the, the blood just dripping here. This is kind of a, uh, a bizarre point of how freshly harvested uh, these food products are. And again, when we drop it back into black and white, 
it doesn't seem as gruesome. It doesn't seem as real. It seems kind of beautiful with the, the textures and the colors, but it doesn't really give you that sense of, of meat. Same with this one. This uh, looks like a stomach. Uh, it looks like it's probably a stomach or part of a stomach or intestines or something of that nature that's been uh, prepared to be purchased and eaten. In the black and white, it's not quite as uh, real. It's, uh, it lets us take a step back from the reality of, of just seeing the raw flesh in front of us. And this one's really hard to deny. I mean, this is uh, obviously a bull's head. There's still meat on it that's, that's to be eaten. Uh, I would imagine the brains are still in there. Um, and there's, uh, you know, this, I don't know how they would prepare this or cook this, but it is for sale. And, and people do buy the head of the animal and for consumption, for food. In black and white, it seems almost like it's still alive. Like it could still be alive. You've got, it's obviously a very fresh kill. And here, brains. We have, we have more organs that people eat. And again, this is kind of just a reminder that in countries that are not as wealthy, there is no waste. You know, the, the wealthy may eat the, the flesh and the poor eat the organs. Uh, it's a source of protein. And uh, this is obviously a delicacy for some. And I don't have an answer for this. This is basically the snut of the animals. Um, they've been removed and they're here for sale. I imagine that there's some way that they're prepared, maybe in a soup, I don't know. But it's just a reminder of the, the lack of waste in a poor country when it comes to protein. And again, more snuts. Don't know how this uh, is prepared, cooked, eaten. Have no idea. And as a final shot here, uh, we take back out to the field where uh, uh, these animals are grazing. Uh, they're rather interesting. Um, fur, I guess you call that fur, looks almost like it's uh, been braided in dreadlocks. I'm not sure if this is used for uh, clothing, um, but obviously they're letting it grow long uh, to harvest it in some manner for these animals. And that's it for today's uh, uh, presentation of um, Eat What You Kill. I hope you understand the concept of uh, Eat What You Kill a little bit differently than you might have coming into this talk. So um, I'm going to wrap this up and say again, thank you very much for attending my talk. Uh, thank you for uh, visiting my website if you do decide you would like to do that. Uh, it's samdobrowphotography.com, and uh, I will be conducting these artist talks on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 3 p.m. throughout the month of October. We're getting towards the end of the talks right now, and uh, all of the talks are archived on my YouTube page, so if you want to go back and take a look at some of the other talks about different types of art that I produce, uh, everything from the surreal to the traditional uh, please do. Uh, there's quite a bit out there, and uh, it'll also give you a little bit of insight what's on my website if you want to take a tour of that. My last talk of the month, I'll actually take you through a guided tour of my website and show you how to find 
the pictures that you're looking for, the artwork that you're looking for uh, among my many works. Uh, it's kind of like walking through, uh, through an art gallery with multiple wings and I can show you how that's all done uh, on uh, later this month. But there are some good talks still coming up that are talking about my portfolios. I hope you'll uh, attend and thank you. Thank you very much once again. And we will uh, we'll wrap it up for today.